Hello, thanks for joining me for another secret creature feature, the art of Kelly Patton. Today's time-lapse painting is Griffin's Treasure, and the topic will be, where do you get your ideas? Someone asked me recently, where do you get your ideas? I've had this question many times. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult to answer because they come from infinite sources, whether it's my own personal experience, or a loved one's story, or even a dream that I had. Um, but to answer the question, I've made an attempt to organize a general process of how my paintings have been created and how I got ideas for them. Uh, so back in the day, I used to spend way too much time on this blog called Cute Overload. It gave me a daily dose of dopamine to boost my mood via cute baby animals. And it made me realize that animals could have a healing quality in my paintings. I often choose animals as subjects because of the cozy feeling they give, and also because they're just so fascinating and beautiful. So when I want to make my art, I try to create that fuzzy feeling again, and it almost always involves an animal. I like to add bright colors to give it more lushness, and watercolor is my medium of choice. I don't want to end up with just a colorful picture of a cute animal like Lisa Frank or something. I want more from it. I think about how I could use more help with what's going on in my life. Say I'm missing a friend or feeling lonely. The creature is there to pr provide a remedy for that dark feeling. So the foxes are dancing on a pile of skulls under the trees. The message in the picture is the solution to my problem to dance with both light and dark aspects of myself to eliminate the lonely feeling. And the skulls, they aren't just there to look cool, they were placed there to remind me that without the dark feeling, there would be no reason to join in on the creative energy in the first place. Darkness has a very important role in my creative process. The painting I'm working on today was inspired by the mythical creature the griffin and it combines many symbols that have personal significance. Uh, first off, I've been studying the colors of a peacock feather. I wanted to incorporate that into the palette. In alchemy, the iridescent peacock stage describes the most beautiful point in an arduous psychological transformation. So the bird side of my griffin has the coloring of peacock because I have a connection to the feather, but I also want to communicate the transformation of the feminine energy and more specifically the mother. So the mother is brave, resilient, nurturing, and beautiful. She makes sacrifices that go beyond her own self-interest, and her transformation from a maiden to a mother can be arduous. But the reward of raising her baby is the iridescent stage, her kaleidoscope of love and memories. Historically, a griffin is half eagle, half lion, but I can't help myself when it comes to remixing creatures for my own purposes. So the other half of this creature is a jaguar. In shamanism, the jaguar comes to protect the shaman during their journey, and the mother guards, nurtures, and protects her greatest treasure, her baby. There are three healing plants within the painting. The first is cannabis, a medicine that holds the quintessential goddess nurturing energy. When used with ritual intentions and limited frequency, cannabis can elevate every sense in our system. It pushes us to the edge of our most tender emotions, helps us to love, cry, mourn, and feel the moment to its fullest. Feeling these parts of our emotions is healthy, and crying is like exercising a muscle. You can feel tremendous relief afterwards. Now, if your doctor suggests you avoid cannabis or you live in a state where it's illegal or you're under the age of 21, I'm not giving you consent to use the medicine. I'm only describing my experience with the plant and that may be different from yours. Chamomile is the second herb that appears in the piece and is a food safe plant that anyone of any age can ingest. I brew chamomile tea daily. Uh, it is common in our house, as common as coffee, and our children love it. It acts as a balm for the nervous system. Drinking it on a regular basis helps to ton tonify the body so everyone can be more patient and calm. I love to involve my little ones in the process of making and brewing tea, and chamomile can be enjoyed by everyone at tea time. The third herb is red clover. Red clover causes the body to produce small amounts of estrogen and is a good remedy for women. We need to be reminded to nourish our bodies in order to be the most genuine humans we can. I want people who look at my paintings to connect with a spiritual energy and not necessarily read into it as a literal statement. So when I use the term mother energy, I'm referring to a vibration that we all carry within our bodies, no matter if you're a person who gave birth or not. Every person has the mother and child connection. They know deep in their human experience what it feels like to have someone nurture you when you're a child. 
So these are all leading up to the idea of caring for a treasure. Griffins are known to guard treasure, and this can represent anything that is value to you. So with that in mind, the significance of the mother communicates sacrifice, hard work, unconditional love, and nurturing the creation that she is involved in. We all can have this experience, and to know the love of creating something connects us to a higher sense of self and lifts us out of depression and anger. So I think that about sums up about this image and a lot of my other images and how they're created with a healing intention in mind. Uh, if you have any questions about my art, you can leave a comment on this video or send me an email at patentillustration at gmail.com. If you liked watching, please subscribe for future videos. You can also visit my website at kellypattonart.com. Thanks so much for watching.